Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Tosi, and um, I'm here to talk about um, translation on, in the WordPress community. And uh, thank you to Arthur for giving me this um, opportunity on short notice. All right, so um, when we talk about translation and WordPress um, community, uh, it's very okay. Uh, if we look at countries where there are like where the official language is not English mm -hmm. like you travel to Spain you travel to Arabic countries and you see that most of their signs on the road everything is written in their own local language and in such places you are used to view websites you know written in their own local languages now uh, here in, in this um, our own um, breakout session here we have plugin developers we have you know all sorts of developers so imagine you're writing a plugin you're based in uganda you're writing a plugin that um let me see an example a any plugin so basically all the features of that plugin is written in english for you that okay you have somewhere that says sign up you have login and now imagine someone in spain wants to use that plugin and that person doesn't understand English. That means the person might not understand what um, sign up here means. And that means that needs to be translated to their own local language. So there's a way plugin developers write plugins for it to be translatable to other languages. And basically in WordPress, we use, make use of the get text. I'm not going to go deep into the technicalities of writing translatable plugins, but we can go to uh, make translate.wordpress.org. There are several resources in there. So, but now I'm just going to explain to us how we can contribute to WordPress as translators. Like David said, um, you can contribute by you know suggesting codes and all that. What if um, you're not writing code but you want to translate? Uh, like I realize, I mean. Uh, one of the languages spoken here. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm new here. This is my first time in Uganda. So I know um, Luganda is a particular language. I, you're right. Yeah, so you can write the plugin. You, you can translate WordPress into Luganda. And um, that means anybody that uses WordPress can change their website, their WordPress site language to Luganda. And every of the text displayed on there is in Luganda. So introduction to WordPress um, translation. So my name is uh, Tosin Oguti. I'm a software engineer at um, Automatic. All right, so who translates WordPress? Uh, and the answer is what? It's you. So many of the WordPress projects um, that have been translated are actually done by individual contributors from all over the world. So we have lots of translators. I mean, close to about 60,000 people contributing in different languages to translate the WordPress um, project. So WordPress translations are powered by volunteer contributors to the Polyglot team. So why do we need to translate? 75% of internet users don't speak English. And over 50% of all WordPress installs are in languages other than American English. So, of course, I've given us a scenario why we might need to translate WordPress even here in, in Uganda. So, the translation process. So, I'm just going to go through the slides and I'll uh, maybe after we do the. the, the <laughs> all right, okay. I'll go through the slide and just show some little things about translating and how we can actually get started. So, the translation process. So you're here and you're like, oh, I want to translate WordPress, that's WordPress core, into my local language. Or there's a plugin someone has written and I want it to be translated to my local language. So what do you do? You sign up and translate the WordPress. Of, oh, I'm going to show us all those. And then you check out the project. You select the project you want to translate. And then you suggest. So most of the projects are written in English language. And then there's a space for you to add in your own translation. You suggest, and mind you, when you sign up, you're signing up as a translator. Now, there are different roles in the translation community. You, um, the base role is the translator, and then we have other roles, super roles, like the PTE, which is a project um, 
translation editor. We have the global translate, translation editor. So these are people that can approve translations because we can imagine anybody just comes on the site and gives false translations. So we have people that would review the translations that you've entered to be sure. And these are very fluent and eloquent speakers of that local language to be sure that, oh, indeed, you're translating it correctly. So if you sign up now, you sign up as just um, a, uh, a translator. So you put in your suggestion, you request a review. A GT, that's a global translation editor or a project translation editor, reviews the suggestion and then either approves it or rejects it or you know requests for changes from you. And then after all the strings in the plugin or in the WordPress project have been translated, a language pack gets created. And this means that uh, with the language pack uh, being generated, that means you can translate that plugin, you can change that plugin settings, the language, to your local language. So first step, um, review your local, local, local teams, glossary, style, guide. So, um, for a language like um, Luganda, uh, one of the things the team, I, I believe it's just, um, the community is just growing. One of the things that needs to be set up is the glossary. So glossary means there are common words in Luganda and this is what they mean. So the community comes up with this, um, that okay, let's say verb, go. This is go in English and this is the translation in Luganda and it's a verb such that any new translator that comes in is able to go through that glossary and say, okay, these are the gui guidelines and everything I need to follow to properly translate to Luganda. Then you create a WordPress.org account. How many of us have a WordPress.org account? All right, thank you. So if you don't have, you please, for you to be able to translate, you need to create a WordPress.org account. And then you visit translate.wordpress.org and this is how it looks like. I'm going to show us in real time as well. This is how it looks like. So you see different languages. You can see Africans, Albanian, Algerian, Arabic, Amharic, Arab, and so on. And then you select a project and suggest um, translation. So here you selected a project and um, you want to suggest translation. So this is the English string that you're translating. So, and then you enter your own translation here in your local language, and then you click on save so when you click on save the pte like i mentioned earlier that's the project translation editor or the gte can go through all your suggestions and say okay this is correct i'm going to approve it i'm going to approve it or reject it as the case may be and then you request a review and also for every locale there's a slack channel that we need to join so for the luganda locale uh, okay, maybe if I go there, um, let me be sure before I disrupt this. I'm going to show us all those things that we need to do. And then so, um, so there are several projects on translate.wordpress.org that we can decide to contribute our translations to. And of course, we're encouraged to translate the main WordPress project. And in this case, at the point where this slide was created, it was WordPress 6.1, which was the latest at the time. So you can decide to translate the whole of the WordPress project itself. And when you get out to 90%, you're able to go on your, anybody who has a WordPress site can select um, the Luganda language and everything on the site changes to uh, Luganda. Mind you, not the content of the site, but everything that pertains to menus, your dashboard. So it means if you're a blogger and then you change your site language to um, Luganda. It doesn't mean your blog post will change to that language, but uh, all the settings, WordPress core settings, would change to your language. So on the, there are meta projects, learn patterns and word camps. So there are several um, areas where we can choose to contribute. So this is uh, a demo. I'm going to share the link. It's about eight minutes, so I don't think we want to watch that right now. But I would do like a small demo for us to see translate.wordpress.org and we're going to be contributing to WordPress core in our language Luganda. So the first step is to sign up if you don't have an account.
So that's my. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm logged in. <laughs> hey. So I'm logged in now. This is translate.wordpress.org. Um, and now I want to contribute as a translator. So first thing is to search for my locale. So here, I come to search locales, and then I type in. So we can see that that's our locale. And then I click on contribute translation. Now there are several, you know, like I said, there are several projects for us to contribute to. This is the WordPress project itself, so we can contribute to any of these versions. 5.9.x, 6.2, this is still in development, but we can choose to, well, ideally we would go for this. Or we can even choose to um, translate themes. Your friend has written a theme, it's not available in the local language. You can decide to, or plugins or patterns or methods. So there are several projects for us, available for us to translate to. <laughs> so let's start, let's just go for uh, this. WordPress project, or does anyone have um, a translatable plugin here that we can translate? Otherwise, let's just go with this. All right. So I select this um, project, and then there are several sub projects, and we can see. Let's take a look at the contributors and see if anyone is here. So we have several translation contributors and we can see total strings total contributions that it made translations 875 we have Timothy a lot of people because we have Arthur we have so a lot of people so when you sign up as well and then you start contributing your profile will appear here so and then so let's start with these. So in there, in this sub project, there are several strings. And when I say when I say um, strings, um, how do I explain that? Of course, uh, we are developers. So, like um, the part that says in your WordPress dashboard, let's say the part that says is howdy. That's a string in your code. So we can decide to change this howdy to your local language. So. And the instances like this and in several other places are called strings. So not just here, in different menu parts of your WordPress. So let's go with this sub-project of the WordPress core. Now these are translations, and you can see the filters translated. So in, in total, for this to be complete, that means we need to translate 5,148 strings. That's why we have all. Out of these 5,000 plus, only 695 have been translated. And then 4,000 plus are untranslated, and um, we have 21 in waiting. So when you contribute your own translation, you're, it automatically goes into waiting. So only the PTEs or the GTEs, that's like the elevated um, kind of um, user, um, are allowed to then go into waiting to either approve or reject your translation. So I'm going to be doing my first um, translation in Uganda. So I go, oh. so I move to untranslated. And these are showing in green because they've been translated. So I go to untranslated. And then I can decide to translate this. So we, need, we want to translate this string. What, how do I write that in Uganda? Who can help me? Sorry, you are not allowed to view terms for this post. Or let me look for another string that might be in it. <laughs> Should we do this? Okay, we, we can do this, right? Um, as a translator, we've entered the Luganda version of this um, English text. And then what next? We click on suggest. So take note of this number here. You can see waiting strings. Let me open this in another tab. It's 21. By the time we suggest, um, it will increase to 22. 
So I'm suggesting this now. Yeah. So it's now in waiting. So let, let just for us to see. 21. I'm just going to refresh this. So now 22. So the PTE on GT, I think I thought it's a PTE, it's a GT. It can come in here and check uh, and then see if it makes sense and then you can approve the, the suggestion. So of course, like we learned, um, there were suggestions from the, so there's something we call the translation memory. So based on other people's suggestions, other people's translations in other projects, the system can generate suggestions for you. And that's why we have all these um, items here. You can see this for poetry, it says kutontoma. So we can decide to copy it if we think it's accurate enough. So that's about um, uh, translating in WordPress. So I encourage us to get a WordPress account. You can decide to, you know, maybe take 30 minutes twice a week or depending on how much time we can make available to translate the WordPress project, starting with that into our local language. And of course, um, each locale has got um, a Slack channel because it's a community because um, sometimes you submit translations and you need your GTE to quickly approve them so you can ping them on those slack channels so I'll be showing the, the slack channel for uh, Uganda is I think wplug.slack.com so but while that is loading um, let's just ensure we get involved in our community join the slack channel encourage our friends and Every other person to, to join and um, uh, yeah, so that's about it. Um, any questions, please, or contributions or ideas? All right. So in the absence of no questions. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, please. All right. That's where the community comes into place. So, um, as of course, when there's a new language, the person that reaches out to the community that I want to set up this language automatically becomes the first GTE. So, and that person can then recommend other translators to become PTEs or GTEs. And then PTEs work when you have a plugin. Say you call your plugin e-commerce. You can make, as a plugin developer, you can suggest that I want this person to be a PT project translation editor, so that that person can actually help you, you know, translate your plugin in that local language. So that's the way you can, yeah. That's it. Any other questions before we? Yes, please. In the WordPress mobile app. Okay, so there are your own language is not included or no languages at all. Sorry, Lugan. Yeah, so yeah, it's the same thing. There's a percentage of translation that needs to have been contributed for it to appear. Even now, if you go into your WordPress dashboard and try to change the language, you won't find Uganda there until you are able to translate the WordPress core project into to a particular percentage, ideally above 90%. And if I go back here, uh, um, David, please help me log in. No, it's fine. All right. So if I go back here, and let me, let's say Spanish. Okay, let me just choose this. Argentina. Oh, you see the progress on each project. 84%, 86%, 87%. Now let's go back to 
and let's start for our own. You see, twenty-one percent, twenty-two percent. It's not even up to fifty percent. So we need to, you know, get more involved and get uh, more translations done. Yes, please. Have I answered your question, please? All right. Thank you. Oh uh, yes, you can, but you know um, there are nuances and there are guidelines for translation, and that's why the community is very very important because you can use Google Translate and then your PT or your GT says no. In this context, this might not be accurate enough, so it can be rejected. But ideally, we prefer that it's prefer that um, local speakers are the ones that actually translate. And that's why we have guidelines, the glossaries and everything for us to be able to ensure that what you're suggesting is actually accurate enough. Because, you know, I, I can be here and say, oh, I want to translate to Chinese. And then I go on Google and say, hello, English to Chinese. And then I copy it. And then, but uh, so, and then one last thing uh, about translation is that that string uh, sometimes do, it, it, it has a context where it's being used. So if you're a developer, you can actually see where that string is coming from. Let me show us an example. So let's say we want to translate this. We can see. So when we come here and see references, we just translated this, um, sorry you are not allowed to view items for this post. Mm. We can see where that actually appeared in the code. All right, so we can see that line 215. Mm -hmm. That is where that text actually appears in the code. Mm. And then like, okay, thank you. Yes, you can see. So this is the get text function that is being used for by developers to make sure that text strings are translatable in the WordPress project. So if you're a developer, you can go in and see, okay, let me see the context where this string is coming from and see if my translation is actually appropriate or accurate enough for that.